Hey everybody, Jim Malone here, coming to you live on Dallas Trading Floor. It is Monday. Happy Monday to everybody out there. Um, the market is really, really strange. We moved from a, a market trend under pressure to one that is uh, a little bit different. We are uh, we're back to a confirmed uptrend, which is uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to a concern uptrend, but there have already been some casualties, interestingly enough, with some of the investment banks, and I want to kind of talk to you a little bit about that. It's kind of unusual thing, but uh, you know, there's something going on because uh, we had some serious margin calls uh, from two banks. But let's get into the slides first. Um, you know, the market has returned to a confirmed uptrend, which is a good thing. Uh, it looks as if, um, you know, even though the even though the Nasdaq is off just slightly at 13.065, um, we we it looks like we're we're on we're we're headed back up to the 50-day line. We're still below that, but it seems as if we have once again retaken a confirmed uptrend. So that. Is, is looking good. The S&P is off a little bit. Uh, a lot of the banks are in this, and that's kind of one of the things I want to talk about today, uh, about the dangers of shorting. <laughs> and here I am, because I short, but uh, I typically am very, very careful. And uh, if I, it moves against me, if just 2%, typically, I'm, I'm out. And this is, this, I could, uh, this is a very interesting uh, thing that happened today. Um, so uh, the NASDAQ itself is, you know, is, is, is pulling down, but the but the Dow Jones is showing some strength. It looks like Boeing is once again showing some strength. And interestingly enough, the part of the market that there's strength in is uh, you know kind of the really weird places like uh, there's strength in the uh, fertilizer stocks. Believe it or not, there's a company called Mosaic M O S that uh, is doing very well. And uh, part of the reason is I think is uh, because they're exporting a lot of their potash and that kind of thing to the rest of the world. It looks as if at least in Asia, they're eating more meat, and so that's a big deal. So interestingly enough, two areas of the market that just never are good, shipping and uh, agricultural products, especially fertilizers, are doing very well. So, you know, it's just a, it's just an interesting, interesting time. Uh, you know, we're moving out of some of the tech still, so you got to be careful there. Because be really careful about tech, um, you know, about, about the techs. I mean, uh, here's what happened today, and uh, this is basically uh, from the Investor Business Daily, uh, which I think is a very, very good source. Uh, basically, two major investment banks got hit very hard today. Uh, one is Nomura, that's a big, big Japanese uh, uh, investment bank, and the other one is Credit Suisse. Everyone's probably heard of them. And uh, there are probably other ones that are going to go down on this one, too, because uh, Ar Ar Arc Helos, <laughs> I get it, Arc Egos, I guess that's what, how you pronounce it, Capital Management, basically it had to just liquidate a tremendous number of funds to meet their margin requirements. And basically, um, you know, uh, Nomura and Credit Suisse are down more than 10% today, and just they just fell off cliff. The the stocks that really are are in play here that they were shorting, that don't appear to be that way, are Viacom, CBS, VIAC, and Discovery, DISCA. Now, I had a I had opened a bull put spread on uh, on Discovery. I fortunately closed that as it when it showed weakness. I typically will. Always close them when they're when they're weak. You know, even if I take a little bit of loss, those stocks are down more than 25 percent on Friday, and it's continuing today. Just kind of want to show you some of these things. So it's very interesting. Um, this is uh, oh, that was Bitcoin. That's the next little thing we're going to talk about. Uh, this is a chart of um, Nomura, and uh, it's only five dollars seventy five cents uh, basically because it's an ADR. It's it's actually traded on the Tokyo Exchange, but as you can see, it just it just it it just absolutely fell right through the 50-day line, and uh, you know it may actually you know it's up trading up a little bit, but uh, this may hit the hit you know this may be down to you know 525 and in, in, in change very very quickly. So this is Nomura, and they are you know this is not looking good for them. Uh, also, Credit Suisse, same kind of thing. Now, Credit Suisse is in worse shape than Nomura is, and they're actually below the 200-day line. So what is this saying? Well, there's a lot of selling going on here. That's a margin call. This is a, this is a chart of discovery. It just, it just went right through 
the Friday night. Now, of course, what I did here is when it fell more than 7%, of course, I was out. This is why you always want to have those stop losses in there, because they're going to help you protect yourself from these unforeseen events. And this is... <laughs> This qualifies as an unforeseen event. It's just, uh, it, it's just very interesting. So that's why you always want to have those stop losses in there, so that even if you know you aren't around when, you know something blows up, you're not hurt, and that's the main thing. Remember, the first thing to do is always to protect your capital, and you do that with stop losses. Um, this is also.
So there we go. I am so sorry about this. I I had trouble with this numerous time. So thank you very, very much. Very, very much. I'll go back over what I was saying here uh, as well. So I so everybody on um, uh, on YouTube, thank you for thank you for bringing that to my attention. I I still I still am not as technically savvy as I need to be on this site. So thank you very much for bringing that to my attention that I was not w working with sound. So let's look at Tesla again so that I can, let's go over Tesla again because I kind of feel like I, um, <laughs> by not, by not having it up, it was, it was kind of a, that's so good. So here we go. Here's the thing with Tesla. Um, I'm looking at a weekly chart here. I do believe, you know, we are in, unfortunately, a downward motion on Tesla. Now, I do think we're going to probably see eventually some support right at the 200-day line, but we're, 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 that's going to be at about 520. And I do think that will bounce, but right now the trend, the overall trend for Tesla is downward. So I think we want to be very, very careful with this. This is a good time to watch this, this one. I do think this will turn around, but uh, I do think it's going to give back a lot of its, uh, a, a lot of its support. Now, if if it pulls below the 200-day average and then it pulls back the 200-day average once or twice, then it may be a short. But right now, the best thing to do with Tesla is to just watch it. Uh, you know, that's going to be your that's going to be your best bet on Tesla. Let's look at Rig, and thank you so much, uh, Zihan, for bringing that to my attention. Um, Transocean is again. You know, you would think it would be doing better, but it isn't. It is pulled below the 50-day line. Now, I did close my um, my bear call Okay, I, I should be back now, and, and I'm going to set that as the default because I, mm, let's see let's see if it will let me. Okay, so let me just make sure that I have this uh, speaker, that this this microphone as default, and it, it I have an issue with this right now. So let me see if I can change the sound here on this, uh, and I'm going to. Uh, Hopefully have this as a default, so hopefully that will be uh, that will be in there. So I I uh, that should be working properly now. So thank you for <laughs> thank you for bearing with me on uh, on this. And let's get back to um, you know to the uh, uh, to the screen here. Let me see how I do this now. Uh, okay, so. All right there we go okay we're back um apologize again <sighs> i did really just um absolutely um i i've i'm i've been out of tesla for a while i did very very well with tesla uh last year but unfortunately it just you know today it, it's not it's not lining up we've got to find that you know every year there's about two or three stocks that really will make you money we're still looking for that one uh, right now, I, I thought it was going to be, uh, you know, something like Discovery or something like that. That's that fell off the that fell off the cliff. Uh, so it's difficult right now. Uh, we don't really have a leader yet. Oil and gas has the most. I think so. I I do believe um, that. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Oh, gosh, golly. I wish I wish I was better technically. Oh, no, bad again. Oh man, I am so sorry. But this hopefully. Now back, <laughs> God, I'm so sorry about my about my technical here. I've just got to figure this out better. But thank you for bearing with me. You're so nice. Um, uh, <laughs> well, here's the thing, <laughs> how to man. We're, we're going to see some pain in the in the market. Okay, uh, I, you know, 
it's just it's inevitable. I mean, it, it's inevitable. The, what's what 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 they're fig- figuring in here too is that we're going to have we're going to have a big tax increase, and uh, it's going to hit the markets. It's you know maybe it, maybe it's time. I don't know. I'm not that political, but we are going to have a hit, and it's going to be and 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 it's going to be there. So what we have to do is we have to move to the areas of the economy that are going to benefit under a Biden administration. Now, one of the areas that I believe is going to benefit under the Biden administration is infrastructure. And the reason is is because I do think we're going to get a lot of infrastructure spending under Biden because that he promised it to the base. So that's one of the reasons why I'm in FLOR, F-L-R. And FLOR basically is a very, very large construction company. It's one of the largest in the world. Uh, there's also some other other good um, uh, areas out there. We're also going to get some action probably in some of the oil stocks. Why? Because they were just so beaten down. It's, I, I, don't, I think long term, you know, oil is not going to be not, as good as it's been because of, you know, everything. But Right now, the price of oil is probably going to start moving, uh, moving up again, and it already has. I mean, it's already above sixty. If it gets above seventy, you can tell that every week the, the the gasoline prices get higher. So that does benefit parts of the economy. There's always places to make money in the economy. You just have to have to look on it. Oh, by the way, on the oh, thank you very much. Um, I have an oil watch list for everybody, um, and I want to get it out to everybody uh, on the action trade alerts. Um, uh, and I can do that. All you have to do on that one is to go, and, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm going to send it out to the list. Uh, let me see. I think I might be able to show it on the you know, I don't know if I can show it on the screen or not. But basically what you do to get on that list uh, to, 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 get the, to, get the, to get that is to go to... Um, to, to, to this, uh, HTTPS, sinfox.com slash Dallas Trading 4. I made a list of 38 companies uh, that are, and I'm going to be sending that out tonight. Uh, these are 38 smaller, uh, these, are, these are 38 smaller uh, oil companies that may do well. Now, I, I'm in one of them. It's Denbury Resources, D-E-N. It's the symbol. I'm going to show you that really quickly. And this is the chart here. It's a it, it's a new issue, but it's an old company. It was it was a public company that went private, and now it's public again. Go figure. Uh, this is the weekly chart of it. It's pulled back a little bit today. It's down about fifteen cents. Uh, but I do think, as you can see, taking a look at this chart, I do think it's strong, and I think it's going to move above this line. It did. It tested, and then it pulled back. So I am I'm fairly confident that I think we're going to see some good action. In this in this stock, as you can see on the volume, uh, there was some very good buying volume. Then it's pulled back today, but I do think it probably will regain its movement up. This is in a good group. It's uh, it's number seven is in, is the, is the industry rank on on this group. Now another one that is in this group that you might want to take a look at is Matador Resources, uh, M T D R. It's a it's a smaller uh, exploration and production company. Uh, but it's definitely worth looking. It's pulled back today, but it pulled back right to the 21-day line. If it reverses on that 21-day line, and it will go higher, because this is a this is when you see this kind of a pattern, it pulls back to the 21-day line and then bounces, and then pulls lower. If it breaks above about 24, that's where you want to buy it, because it does look like it has tested the the uh, it has tested the 21 day line the 21 day line this is the green line here is a very very good place to buy off of but right now you got to watch this this is because it's it's pulled back but i do think we're going to see a bounce here this is another one that you might want to look at matador resources and i just kind of want to look give you the specs on this one it's 66 out of 100 which is very good uh you have on the industry it's seven out of 197 and we have increasing fund ownership going into it. It's a relatively small company, though. So, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not a huge company by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but that's another one you might want to kind of take a, take a look at. I'm going to be sending out a list of 38 companies that basically I screened. So hopefully I'll get that uh, out to everybody, uh, 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 out, um, you know, out, out to everyone. Thanks again. <laughs> Thanks again. Sorry for sorry for the mess ups in, in on the uh, the amateur hour on the uh, on on the show. Uh, let's look at TSN. Uh, TSN, great. 
Okay. And Tyson. Look at Tyson's looking good. <laughs> I guess people have to eat their chicken. And I probably have eaten way too much of their chicken. But it just bounced very, very nicely. This is the kind of this is definitely a very, very bullish chart. You know, it's pulling. It's got the it's got the cup, and it's sort of got a handle. This is not true handle because it's not light enough. But it's moved right past the buy zone. It's pulled back. It's tested the uh, the twenty one day line, and it's pulled right up. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, would I buy at this level? Probably not. It's a little extended uh, for me, but it's looking very good. The checklist is excellent. Seventy seven percent. It's got 1724 funds in it. You know, agriculture is doing well right now. And uh, I really like this RS line. It's a little weak at 49, but it's 20 up. And that's the one thing I'm really looking for. So I uh, definitely like Tyson. This is, a looking, this, is a, this is a good looking chart. We're after hours, so it's up about four cents. Um, I probably would wait for this one to see if it pulls back again to the, to the, uh, the 21 day line. I would, I, that's where I would probably prefer to buy it would be off that 21 day line uh, rather, <laughs> rather than rather than where it is now just because of the market it's not be, it's a good talk um, I do uh, Troy I do do penny stocks every once in a while here's the issue with penny stocks for me why buy a penny stock when you can buy an oil stock which has real earnings that uh, is below ten dollars I think uh, what I want to do here is put out a list of highly rated under ten dollar stocks because they're out there uh the biggest problem with penny stocks is many times they are growth stocks they don't have any earnings and in this environment it's going to be more punished um you know for for about the last year many stocks without any earnings have been doing very very well whereas some of the stocks that have earnings haven't the the, the tables have sort of turned we want to see earnings so yeah i definitely i definitely if you if you stick around and uh, you've got to be on the list, though. I'll try to put this out tomorrow uh, on the list. But this is at the um, uh, on the action trailer. Isn't it free? Uh, it's sendvox.com slash Dallas Training Floor. And uh, I'll get a list of under $10 stocks. So that would be, be kind of a cool that, that'll, that'll be kind of a cool list for everyone. All right. So thanks, uh, Troy. OZSC. Let's look at OZSC. That sounds like a pity stock. OZSC. Oop, and I don't see it out there. Is that right? OZSC. Unfortunately, Troy, I do not see that one, unfortunately. So, let oh, so UDAO. Okay, let's look at the UDAO. The UDAO is interesting. That is the, um, the UDAO is uh, an ETF which is leveraged against the Dow 30, and it's looking good. It's up $1.30, so let's look at that one. Wow, that's actually a very good chart there. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, Mega How To Man. That that is a that is a good chart. That is a very good chart, and it just bounced and very nice. And remember, this is an ETF. Not there's been heavy buying in there, as you can tell. I always look to the volume down here, and it looks as if we are above that little red line. That is the average volume, and so and this is an exponential chart, by the way, not a linear chart. So the fact that it's all these three bars are peaking above that, that is very strong. There's a lot of buying action going on, as you can see. And that's a very nice chart. So would I would I buy the UDAO? I would definitely consider it. I would definitely consider it right now because the Dow is where the strength is in the market. And the UDAO gives you um, three to one performance. So I, I really like uh I like the UDAO right now, and I think that that's a that's a really good potential. I'm gonna mark that down because that that's uh, I might want to put out something on that. That that has the potential of being a nice um, filler until until we can find other good or good opportunities in the market. So that's really really good. Thank you very much, Mega How To Man. Really appreciate it. Um, okay, uh, Samir, let's take a look at Apple, and Apple unfortunately. Uh, even though it is in the Dow, uh, it has not been doing well. Uh, it's at 121. Kind of want to show you that. You know, I had a bear. I had a bull call. I had a bull spread on this one. I closed it because I just I just thought it was going to reverse here. I thought there was a reversal. The reversal did not happen. I closed it. So right now, even though it's pulled up to the 21-day line, the 21-day line is pulling back. So I just can't recommend. 
Uh, if you've got profits in there, you might want to consider taking some profits in Apple right now if you have them. If you're down more than 7%, you might want to sell it and wait for a better opportunity. I just don't, it's just not right now. And I love Apple. I mean, I, you know, I love their products and everything like that. They're great, but I just don't like the stock right at this moment. I mean, the thing about Apple is that it really just has not recovered since it made the 145 uh, uh, peak right back in the January time frame. I mean, uh, you know, it it, uh, it it just really hasn't it hasn't been able to it hasn't been able to move but beyond that. It's just uh, it's amazing. Uh, back last year, of course, this was the the 137 here. This was this was when it made its uh, this is right at the split uh, the the four for one split. And uh, it just really has not been able to move above that. So right now, unfortunately, with Apple, I think you just got to stay out, at least for right now, until it just until it reverses. I do think it is going to reverse, but right now it's trading below the 21-day exponential, and it is above. It's still above the 200-day. What I'm thinking is that we may get a bounce. We may get a big bounce on the 200-day. If we get a bounce on the 200-day moving average, and that's this black line here, then I think it might be a super buy, but right now, it's we just can't it we we just can't buy it. It's just it's just not. Uh, people are selling it right now. I mean, most of the institutions are selling it. So, uh, even though I think they have just excellent uh, prospects, I, I just think we can't own it right now. It's just it's 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 uh, it's it's too 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 risky. Uh, oil and gas is risky as hell. Uh, it, oil and gas is very risky. I totally agree with you. But it is where the bargains are. And uh, so right now we've got to kind of look where the bargains are. And uh, that's just my point is that, you know, um, not everything is going to be as, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit diffi more difficult market to trade. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's <laughs> when will big tech, uh, when will big tech re rebound? Well, you know what? Um, here's a little story. I, I had been trading, this is many years ago. Uh, before the 2000 crash, I, I had been trading uh, Microsoft, and I traded it very, very, uh, uh, very much. And it pulled back more than uh, on basically uh, at the very end of 2000, 1999 into 2000, I sold it. And I did not buy that stock back for 18 years. And the reason I didn't is because uh, until three years ago, until 2017, Microsoft did not move above where it was at, uh, at the very beginning of 2000. So we could see a, a we could see an extended slump in tech potentially, and it may not come back by August. So that's the thing about the market. Many of the stocks in tech are 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 overvalued, and so they're going to be, um, you know, people are going to be selling them, and a lot of other people are going to be buying them. But I I think that at least at least is if if we have any hint that interest rates are going up, and we do because. The Biden administration wants to raise taxes and it wants to raise interest rates, and that will hurt probably the tech sector more than anything else. The sectors that will do the best if that happens are the inflationary sectors because that's exactly what the government needs right now. They need some inflation. Well, they're going to create some inflation. And so what's going to happen is, I believe, is the prices of various assets are going to go up. Uh, you know, house prices probably are going to continue to go up. We're probably going to see, um, you know, oil prices go up, believe it or not, because not everyone's going to be driving a Tesla, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to probably see those go up. So, f But the wages aren't going to go up. So we're going to have taxes go up, uh, prices on commodities go up, but wages won't will go down because of taxes. So we're looking at a situation where we're probably, it's not ideal for the, for, we had a, essentially a really good situation in the last four or five years in the tech sector where we had very, very low interest rates and we had a lot of money coming in. So, you know, it may be a little bit more difficult to make money in tech than it has been in the past. I hope not, but it, it may be. Um, KO has been on rip. Let's look at KO. That's Coca-Cola. Yeah, that makes sense because that's a consumer staple. Yeah, and consumer staples do well when there's a lot of... Uh, when when there's when there's a lot of, uh, of of turmoil, absolutely. Look at this. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, Ko has done very well, you know. And and uh, even if the world goes uh, to, to you know to a bad way, people are still going to drink their Coca Cola. I know I am. So that's a very good call. That's John. That's a very good. That's a very good call because basically when we start to see problems in the economy 
in terms of taxes and things like that, we tend to see uh, movement to these kind of these safe areas like, uh, you know, Coca-Cola is definitely one of them. Also, you know, we see that, um, you know, some of the, is again, the, the, the infrastructure plays are doing well. Uh, mining, <laughs> mining is doing well. You know, it practically never does good. Shipping is doing well. Uh, but uh, tech isn't just, isn't as strong as uh, it needs to be. And that's just, that's a very, very good point that you bring up. Very good point. And uh, definitely worth looking at Coca-Cola and other, some of the, and, and Pep too. That's a PepsiCo. Uh, they're just, uh, you know, PEP, that's another one, of course, Coke and Pepsi. They're also, look at that chart on Pepsi. It's looking good. I mean, you know, people are, you know, <laughs> with the COVID thing, people are still going through the drive through at Taco Bell and they're getting those Pepsis at the store. So they're doing good too. And, and I think they will do good. It's a little expensive stock, 144, but this is another one that you might want to, you know, put on your radar screen, Pep. Uh, PepsiCo. So that's also a really, really good one. Let's look at KOS. Cost, this is a very interesting. I am, um, <laughs> for full disclosure, I did a, uh, about a year and a half ago, I was at uh, a company called, um, Pen, um, a company called Sunoco, which by the way has relocated from, it's kind of a tragedy. They've relocated uh, to Dallas from, um, from Pennsylvania, but uh, I worked with them. And for a little bit, and uh, Cos Cosmos Energy is really interesting. They're they're very heavily they're a very big offshore uh, driller, and they drill basically off the coast of uh, Africa, but West Africa. Very interesting company. Very strong. It's cheap at two dollars and sixty three cents. Now it's very volatile though. It, it, you see it lost eight percent today, but and and the relative strength though is very strong at ninety three. This is a very interesting company. It's not a big company. It doesn't really have a great checklist. It's only 44, but I do think that this area is going to see some, some strength. There's 339 funds in it. Uh, the industry and sector, again, number seven. That's very, very good. Uh, that's the list that I'm talking about. Now, this didn't make my list of top. This didn't make my top 38 list, but I'm very familiar with this company. It's a very well-run company, and this is one you want to post, put on your watch list. This is why you should consider, if you're interested in penny stocks, why not look at some of these E&P companies? Because these E&P companies in this environment have earnings. Uh, I mean, this 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 one, this one has earnings. Uh, yeah, 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 it has cash flow. See, right there, uh, it's 58% funds. It's a, it's a cheap stock, but uh, it definitely has some stuff to look at. Let's look at Oxy. Oxy bought a bought a company called Anandarko. Yeah, let's see if I can get Oxy up there. And uh, um, the the president of the company lost her job because of it. Uh, but I think she just might have been too early because I do think that this one could be could be big, could be huge. Um, they they have a terrible checklist. I wouldn't buy it right now, but I would get it on my watch list because I do think this one may be able to make some serious money. They've had some issues regarding sales, as you can see. They're down 53%. But this is largely due to the price of oil, and the price of oil has doubled in the last month or so. So this is something to look at. This is not a bad company to look at either. Um, but it does it does have management issues. It's not as big good a company as some of the other ones, but definitely one to look at. Um, have twenty thousand shares cost it not eight. awesome. Uh, you know what? You're gonna you're <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Can I get your phone number? <laughs> Ryan <laughs> That's great. Congratulations, man! You're, you you know that that's awesome. No, no, hang on to those bad boys. Oh, that's great! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cost, yeah. That's there. You go. Yeah, I I think you're going to be. I think you have a winner. I think you have a winner there, uh, Ryan. I, I think you have a winner. I'm very familiar with the company. The, <laughs> where where I worked with uh, Pennzoil, right across the parking lot, were these guys, and I used to meet these guys at lunch. Um, so I know a little bit about the company. It's, it's quite well run uh, for for what it is, but it's 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 high stake risk. But I think you're going to do fantastic. This is a good chart. This is this is a good chart, Ryan. And uh, man, I I hope this goes to five. If this goes to five, you know you need to be some popping some corks. <laughs> you need to be popping some corks. I, this could easily go to five easily. It could easily go to five because because see see look it, it was at six before the downturn. So I think that you know the potential is there. The potential is there, Ryan. Fantastic. Good move. And, uh, you know, I think you got possibly a winner. 
Uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> so, fan, fan, fantastic. Good. Thanks for bringing that up. Thanks for bringing I want to. I definitely want to put it on the watch list as well. Um, let's look at uh, WRAP. Yeah, the oil and gas, you, you can make money in that field. <laughs> you can because it's so, it's, it's so hammered. I mean, um, now, when they get higher, it's going to be more difficult. But uh, I do think we're going to see uh, oil and gas move very nicely. And uh, congratulations on that. That's awesome. Uh, Wrap Technologies. Uh, this is uh, security products, of course. Let's take a look at Wrap. Um, unfortunately, not a chart I'm particularly liking with this downward motion. This is on the weekly chart. That's where you really start. So we do have a downward motion. It has fallen below the 200-day line. So here's the thing about a stock that's below the 200-day line. That's this black line here. And also, we do have a de we do have declining volumes. That's that's good. It looks like it may start to move higher. But here's the thing: when a stock is below the 200-day line, absolutely try. It, unless there's of some very very good reason, try not to buy them below the 200-day line because. The trend in the last 200 days is that it is a it is a downward trend. So, don't don't buy a stock like this right now. Uh, it, also, if you look at this blue line, this is the this is the relative strength line. It's pointed downwards. You just got to avoid this one, unfortunately. Um, this one, yeah, it's 44 checklist. This is gonna this isn't gonna help you, unfortunately. So you got to avoid wrap technologies. But I thank you for bringing it up. Um, you know. You know, let you know it's all. You know, let's maybe we can look uh, near this carrot. Where to find it? Oh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, John. Uh, appreciate that. Um, here it is. Let me let me put it up here. Uh, let's see. Where is that? Where is that? Uh, do I have it? <laughs> um, you know what? I don't even I don't even have it up here. Let me. Uh, basically, what it is. Is uh, let, let me let me put up the link here for the Discord link. It's it's um, Vinny <laughs> www.vinny v i v h i n n y dot com slash Dallas Trading Floor. So that is uh, that is the link for it. If I got it right, okay, there we go. That is the link for it, www.vinny.com slash Dallas Trading Floor. So that's the link to um, the Discord room. And uh, I do have a special on that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, just just for the first 50 people. So uh, we, we are, uh, we, and we're getting, you know, we haven't, we haven't officially opened. We're just, we're just opening it right now. So it's, uh, that's uh, very exciting. That's going to be like more one-on-one -on -one and, and some, hopefully some insider trades that I'll be sharing with everyone in that Discord room. So thank you very much for asking. That's very nice of you. Um, let's see. Let's look at uh, let's let's look at um, X. Oh, X XPO XPQ Logistics. XPQ. Um, oh, XPO not XPQ. I'd help if I could. There we go. Not a bad looking chart, by the way. Uh, not a bad looking chart, uh, Demetrius. Not a bad looking chart. We're definitely, um, yeah, we're up after hours. Looks like we're in a buy zone. No, nope, we're just below the buy zone. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Let me look at the daily chart to see if there's an entry point. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's okay. It's in a consolidation. This is a this is a fairly good chart. Um, here's the thing: there is a buy point on it, and I think you really have to be careful. I would try to buy this above 128.57. I, I would buy this at 128.57 plus 10 cents, or 128.67. That's where I'd buy it, and I'd buy it right in here, and that's the buy zone. Currently, the um, you know you know currently the the buy point is 128.57 on a consolidation base, second stage. And that's a pretty good, that's pretty good. Let's look at the, you know, logistics are doing well in this particular market. So that's not a bad place to be. 55 checklists this is a little bit low. I'd like to see a better checklist than this. But the industry is, this is the issue. The industry is 153. I do think this is going to improve. But right now, the transportation logistics group is not good. So here's what I would do with this one. I would watch list this one. I don't think it's a buy right now. 
I think you got to be careful with this one, Dim uh, Dimitris. I think you got to be a little bit careful with this one. I don't think it's a buy. I'd be careful with this one because it doesn't. It, uh, it, I, I like the stock, but I don't like the sector. That's that's my my opinion on it. Hey Troy, thank you for uh, bringing up Nog in OG. In OG. Northern Island Gas. Okay. Well, this is a Canadian, I believe, company. Yeah. It's on the Amex. Um, it's I don't like this chart as much as some of the other ones. It's it does have a it does have a falling relative strength line, but it's had some good buying in there. Let's look at the weekly chart. I, this is when you really have to look at the weekly. Yeah, it's still not bad. Let's see if it reverses at the at the fifty day line. Right now, I don't think it's a buy, but you know I just think you want to buy an uptick. It's still got a good checklist. Sixty six percent. And um, okay, ninety. That's not bad. And it's in it's in it's in number seven. So I like this group a lot, but I do think there's better ones in the group. And I want to show you. Um, it's a little bit more expensive stock, but I want to show you um, Matador, uh, MT MTDR. I think this one really uh, might be a little bit better. It's 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 a little bit more expensive. It's a twenty three dollar stock. And it, it has been pulling back, but I do think we're going to see it move a little higher here. Um, yeah, okay, so we're right at the 21-day line. Um, so this is a really, really good group to, to, to look at uh, in terms of things. Let's, let's see if I can find some other ones that are in that group because you know, I have been kind of talking about it, and um, it, it's really a good group to, to, to look for, op for, for opportunities in right now because it seems as if that's where a lot of the um, you know a lot of the things are going. So here is the this is the this is the look of the oil and gas E and P group. This is the U.S. based one, and it looks as if we have pulled above the 21 day line. It would pull in overall. Now this is every this is everything in the group. So I kind of want to show you from top to bottom. The number one, of course, is EOG Resources. So let's let's look at e, well, let's look at Pioneer. PXD is is a good company as well. It's a little expensive, um, but it's it's a very good company. Eighty. This is one PXD. If you're willing to go a little bit more, um, but I think where you can make some of the best gains on in this group is um, thirteen ten is in um, is in this area. Let's see if we can find some relatively cheaper. Uh, let's see if we can let's see if we can see some relatively cheaper stocks that are in this area. So let's look at the stocks in the group. I want to see some. Let's look at and this is by size, by the way. Denbury, okay. Um, CPE, I think, is a pretty. Yeah, I I was looking at this one the other day. So thirty six dollars stock. Um, it it also has essentially a similar pattern. This one is not bad either, and it does have options, so that might be a way to play it. It's got a relative strength of 99. That's why I like this one so much. It's 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 very strong against the rest of the market, and we have increasing uh, we have increasing sales in, in in light of the fact that that the price was d lower then. So this is looking quite good actually. Um, this one CPE Callan Petroleum. There's also another one in here that's I think fairly inexpensive as well. It's a Permian play, it's Ring, um, R, um, R E I, I believe is the is the symbol for it, Ring. Yeah, Ring. There it is. Okay, this is a very inexpensive one, but it's a very highly rated. So, if you're willing to, if you can deal with a little bit of, if you can deal with a little bit of uh, <laughs> volatility, and this one has a lot of it, uh, this is one you might want to look at. It's called Ring Petroleum, but it's got a relative strength of 98. And it's above the 50-day line. So this one, it's very small. This is not a very big company. Uh, it's it, its checklist is really really subpar. It's only 44 percent, but uh, its industry is seven. And it's it's this if, if anybody invests in this one, this could be this could be very big. I'm familiar with this company, not just uh, because not because of the stock, but because I know that they have uh, I, I've traded uh, oil leases and this. This company buys in the Midland area. This is from Midland, Texas. This is the company. 
So this is another one you might want to look at, Ring Energy, REI. It's got a very high relative strength. Now, this is much more speculative than, uh, than some of the other plays. And these are the oil plays, and, and these are very dependent on the price of oil, so very difficult. Um, should we be, uh, absolutely. Should we be watchlisting John Deere and CAT for a new bill? Absolutely, absolutely. These are some of the best cocks out there. Let's look at CAT first. CAT is a major component of the Dow, and, and, and it has a very nice chart. So I, I, I totally agree with you, John, on this. CAT is an excellent choice. Uh, it's very, very strong earnings. When, 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 it, when it gets in the right cycle, this can be a very big winner. And it does look like we're coming to a situation where we're a little bit close to earnings in only 31 days. But this is the kind of area CAT and Deer are excellent right now because of the of the um, of the um, uh, of the infrastructure play. So let's look at DE, and this is this is Deer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is uh, this is this is very strong. I mean, look, it's up after hours. Um, just very strong all the way around. 89 relative strength, excellent checklist. A lot of funds in this one, ton of them. The industry is good, 46 out of uh, 197, so that's excellent. Um, yeah, this is this is definitely should be on your watch list, is, is Deer and Company. Absolutely, a very, very good stock. Very, very good stock. Um, I think Deer is probably a little bit better than Cat, but they're both excellent. Uh, you know they're 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 both they're both excellent. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, okay. Thoughts on? Oh, this is interesting. Get scared. I like that. SKLZ kills. Uh, SKLZ. Thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. This is a this is an online um, platform. Not you know. Unfortunately, this you know, so many good companies are going to get swept up into this. You know de-investment right now from tech and i think this might be one of them um it you know i tell you it, it elections have a con elections have consequences because as you can see we we ran up very very nicely here and then boom you know change of administrations it's down so uh it's still pretty good but i wouldn't invest in it just i don't like the i don't like the way this chart looks uh unfortunately I think you're catching a falling knife here. I wish I wish I could be more positive on this, but and I I, I think you know it, again it's it, it it depends on just where the monies are monies are flowing because um, it, there's nothing wrong with this area. It's a great area. I mean I think I think online education is a super duper business, but it just you know in this kind of environment you know they're they're looking for more cyclical stocks that have earnings. So oh hey another one I want I think I want to put out. There was a spinoff from uh, uh, United Technologies, uh, Carrier, C-A-R-R. -R. And I just want to show you this, this, this chart because it broke out today. And I think it's very, very worth looking at. It's only a $42 stock. And yet, this company has worldwide sales. Uh, this, the checklist is kind of is weak at 55 but it's getting better. And the industry sector is not very good. It's AC and, and heating. You know, you say, God, that's, that's terrible. But... The stock itself is was spun off from from uh, from United Technologies, and you can see it's just moved right above into a buy zone. It's in the buy zone right now. It's carrier, and I think uh, you know if if you if you're in the building trades or if you if you know anything about that, you know that man, these guys they make air conditioners for everything, and uh, they're very big. You know, I was in um, about a year ago. I was in Thailand. And uh, huge manufacturer, Courier is a huge manufacturer in Asia with these split units, and they're doing very well. So this is what I think you might want to put on your radar. It's Courier, C-A-R-R. -R. And it was a spinoff from United Technologies, very strong company. And uh, I think this one, again, it's, it's not very exciting in terms of, you know, things, but it definitely has a huge market. And, um, you know, it's just one of those, it's one of those kind of stocks with, you know, Caterpillar, and Deer, and these kind of stocks that are just going to do very well in this this uh, this infrastructure-based economy because if they build a lot of infrastructure, I guarantee you they will have a lot of he heating and cooling units. Uh, the demand will be be high for this, and and this will be a good area, and and this is a very very well company run run company. So I just want to th put that out there with Kerry. So you might want to put that on your watch list as well. Uh, what's your oh thank you for that. Uh, I have. Uh, 
let me. I, I my my opinion on Bitcoin is I actually made an investment in Bitcoin today, but I made it through the GBTC, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, and uh, so let me show you that just really quickly here. Uh, let's let's oh let's go to yeah. I did I I, I bought a, a position in the GBTC today. It did gap up, so this is uh, what I was watching for, and I've been in and out of. Uh, of this quite a few times. So let's look at GBTC. The, the reason I use GBTC is that instead of investing in, in Bitcoin directly, I invest in the GBTC because it gives me uh, excellent liquidity. And uh, this is, if you can see, these are the marks that I have. This is my my um, my lower limit and my upper limit. I think we're at the upper limit. Yeah, it's up $3 today. So very nice. Uh, I was watching for this. Yeah, and I'm right at, yeah, I'm right at it. I think my, where's my? I just want to see what my uh, okay yeah this is this is a definitely a buy point as well another buy point here so I do think if it pulls above this fifty dollar you you could probably consider even even going with a larger position I I added one small position today and I may add another position tomorrow but this company this uh, trust has about four percent of the world's Bitcoin so it's definitely a good way to go and I do. I do. Uh, I, I am pretty bull. I am pretty bullish on Bitcoin uh, and as well. So I, I think it's. I think it definitely has legs. All right. Oh, tractor supply. <laughs> this uh, tractor supply is kind of a weird. Uh, um, this is a Kramer special. Uh, uh, Jim Kramer, who's on CNBC, he really likes this uh, tractor supply. Um, I'm not currently in it because uh, this is really for more of you know your your hobby farmers this isn't really like john deere which is like for real you know real farms <laughs> you know real farms um but uh, let's look at tractor supply i actually am from a place in california I'm originally from california and uh it's um let's see um that's where they have real farmers in Selena. <laughs> in salinas not your uh not your uh, um not your drugstore ones. I mean, real ones. Uh, let's see, tractor supply. Oh, TSC. I yeah, I should have known that. I should have known that. Um, should have known that. Uh, okay, so let's look at tractor supply. And I just did something. There we go. No, nope. all right. I'm still trying to figure out if I'm if I'm on. Is there? Okay. <laughs> I don't seem to be. Heck. Let's see if I can get out of that for a second. All right. Um, let me see if I can get back to my screen here because I've just about run out of time today. Um, all right. Uh, hmm. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. That's where it is. It's I have so many windows open. It's just I can't uh, I, I I can't find out exactly where it is. So let's see if I get back. No, not there either. All right. Um. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Finally found it. <laughs> so, anyways, let's look at TSC uh, real quick and see what it is. CSC. This will be the last one for today, but thank you very much for everyone. Uh, tractor supply. It's pulled back to the. Uh, it's it's pulled back to the 21 day. I mean to the uh, 40 day line. Uh, it seems to be working. It seems to be working pretty good. Um, the question is, can can it move above the 21 day line? Uh, I'm not sure that it can uh, for right now. So here's the thing. I would watch this this one. It's very good. Very strong relative strength at 86. Uh, looking at, a, you know, the checklist, 66, that's my minimum. So that's very good. Nice funds in it. And look at the, yeah, 33. So, yeah, I, definitely a good definitely a good stock. Here's the thing. I would wait for upward motion on this to end to buy, but I do like tractor supply. I do like tractor supply. Well, thank you everybody for for being um, you know for for taking a look today. So appreciate it. Didn't get to everybody. I tried to get as many, many people as I possibly could. I'll be back tomorrow at uh, two thirty Central, three thirty Eastern. Thank you so much for taking the time 
to to uh, to watch. Um, oh, and I have a question from Alan Jones. Uh, do you scan to find stocks, or do you do swing trade? Well, I do both actually. I scan and but I, what I do is I'm a little bit different than a lot of people in that I. Um, I use, uh, I, not only do I scan, but I scan in certain sectors. I look to see, first of all, where the where the market is moving. And right now, the market is moving, unfortunately, out of tech. I love tech. I love growth. I made a, a lot of money in that last year. Um, but this year, it, you know, things change. There's other opportunities, and a lot of those are going to be in some of the infrastructure stocks, some of the oil and gas, some of the big construction companies, the construction companies, or the heavy equipment manufacturers like Caterpillar and Deere. So, um, very good opportunities there as well. So, uh, by the way, I'm going to be putting out a list of 38 little-known uh, oil stocks uh, tonight on um, a Dallas trading floor and, of course, and on the uh, uh, Action Trade Alerts. And the easy way to get on that, just, you know, I'll try to, try to do that. It, it probably will be later, may, maybe as late as 9 o'clock tonight because I, I have to do some things as well. But uh, it will be, we'll have hopefully out by by that time and uh, the way you get on that is it's it's very easy uh all you do is you go to um there you go to sendfox.com slash dallas trading floor so um for everybody thanks again for taking a look and uh, i hope to see you again tomorrow happy trading and